Welcome back to the Booty Bands More Than Fitness podcast, your host, Danita Young. And today our topic is about remembering who you are, that light from within. And today this is going to be an author. She's a sound healer, a dedicated practitioner and teacher of Kundalini yoga and meditation, a sound healer and a spiritual guide. And from divorce, single parent, hearing loss advocate supporting the own needs of her children, she has chosen to turn her darkness into her light in her own life. Embrace all those challenges as we know as lessons and forever change the narrative of her future and that of her family. So let's go ahead and introduce Lisa Anise and welcome her in today's podcast as we learn something from her life that can help see our light as well. Let's get started. Booty Bands and Barbells helps busy women sculpt and tone their bodies in just 15 minutes a day through our physical products and our one-on-one coaching. The amazing book that you just wrote as far as I am light and Mm -hmm. I love it's 180 days to remember who you are. So I want to ask you, what was the reasoning for actually writing the book? You kind of explained it a little bit in your book, but I wanted to hear from you. What, what was your reasoning behind writing it? Yeah. Well, thank you, Denise. I I absolutely love the flow you're talking about here. So the book was written for my boys. I I was going through separation and eventual divorce. And I wanted my two young boys to know the truth about life and what was going on. And I felt this deep connection to write it down. Um, Writing became very healing for me as a way to process all the difficult emotions that were going through a divorce, separation with a relationship. And I felt this massive calling to do that and share. And that's why I wrote the book, I Am Light. Mm, Thank you for sharing that. That's awesome. I, there's a lot of people that can relate as far as going through a journey of life and having those places of separation or death or birth of some things going on in their life. And so what a beautiful book to be able to share with people of remembering who you are. So kind of bringing them back to who they really are. So if you could think of something that really is the most profound part of your book that you really enjoy the most, what is what would be that? So I wrote the book... And my son also was going through a hearing loss diagnosis at the same time. So I was toggling both a divorce and the hearing loss diagnosis, but also I was 40 years old and I recognized the real biggest thing was I was not living, living the truth. And I was not presenting myself to the world as authentically as who I was, which led me to my separation. And so that is weaved throughout the book when you are yourself and you allow yourself to be authentic, you could be free. And the book is a way for for anyone to pick it up and allow themselves 20 minutes a day. Just like Danita, you talk about 15 minutes a day. So this is 20 minutes a day of reading a passage. Each day is a new quote and a passage that I'm very vulnerable about with my personal experiences opportunity for you to reflect yourself on that passage and then you can develop your own healing practice with yoga postures to move energy meditation and sound healing so that's basically i wanted people to have their own healing practice to start their day that was the ultimate goal and i believe if you follow the plan and you're consistent you'll be able to view life differently and feel differently in your own skin what were some of your struggles, whether if it's writing it or kind of that you'd like to share that is vulnerable? Because we know that vulnerability actually does connect us to each other, truly. And so going into that, what would you say is probably one of your most um, favorite vulnerable stories that you'd like to share with us? Oh, um, you know, I, I think, you know, it was very difficult to share with my husband that I wanted to get a divorce because I was married for 10 years. We had known each other prior and you get married, you think all the best, you know, your to-do list is not, I want to get divorced one day. So it was extremely difficult to recognize through my marriage that what I was yearning for had changed. The connection had changed. And I share about that in in the book because I feel a lot of people may be going through that as well as they have a you know to do list in their mind of things they're looking for as a, a partner, and then you 
you have children, you have a, you know, have a house and, and your life changes and allowing yourself that change. And you started this call with flow. So if you're allowing the, the flow of your life, change happens. And so I feel that that was a huge hurdle for me, just coming to terms with, I think we should separate. I think this is best for us, not knowing what would happen, but I knew in my heart that living that way was no longer serving who I was. And I recently saw a video or a reel on Instagram that talked about communications. And if you don't feel safe to be who you are and communicate who you are and your needs in your relationship, then you're really not living from your highest self. And when I learned or saw that video recently, I was like, that's exactly where I was. I was not comfortable communicating who I was. And I had to experience life alone to see what it's like. And I realized that, that I'm in a better place right now. And in turn, because I am in such a higher vibration and a better place, that example goes to my two boys who are now 11 and 10. They were seven and eight when I, when I separated. And they see a whole different mother. And I parent differently. I flow, you know, and I allow them to connect with who they are. And because I am who I am, it allows them to be who they are. And I respect them as little beings who are going to be grown men one day. And, and I also feel this separation divorce had given me a chance at being a, sec a mother again because I'm viewing my children from a different perspective and that is what all matters is my little boys I'm raising. Thank you for sharing that. What came for me was um, when they're going through something like something that you went through, they want to know what the end result is going to be. They want to know, well, if I do this, what's going to happen here? What's the next step or what's going to happen to them? And they kind of go into this, like, I want to know everything that's going to be the fuller picture. Okay, so recently it's been brought up. I was working with a member that she is in the stage of about ready to make a decision of making a divorce as well. With that, she has fear of the unknown of, well, what's going to happen the next step? So if I go to the divorce, there's a, a feeling of humans that were like, well, wait a minute, what's the next steps after that? And with that feeling of unknown, it's kind of crippled her to keep staying where she's at. So I wanted to ask you, as you going through the experience, what comes up for you and how did you get to that part of those next steps? Great question. And, and as a healer, I became a healer post-divorce. I am attracting a lot of women who want to get divorced or may get divorced. And so I get this question a lot and it's very unique to each person and knowing when you've had enough, really, there's so much unknown. There's so much fear. And a lot of it is based on, and my personal opinion was materialistic things. You know, I had this nice house, this beautiful four person family. It's what I always wanted. I'm secure. I'm secure in knowing my needs are provided for, but that was all physical needs, right? Things you could touch. What wasn't provided for, for me, this is just me, was the emotional connection I so desperately was looking for. And I knew would not happen where I was. That was the truth. And that was what's so very difficult with my, my, my marriage. And so for me, a lot of times the emotional stuff, it, it happens in our bodies and then it comes out in physical symptoms and makes us sick. A lot of my stress goes to my gut. And I knew that my gut was in a really bad place for a long time. And it was because I was ready to share I think we should separate. Now, it didn't come as a surprise, you know, it was surprising, but we were, we were working through therapy, you know, but once I finally made that clear my, my throat, kind of my throat chakra opened up with speaking, then things got more lighter. I was like, okay, I didn't die by sharing this news. And to me, I wanted to live. I wasn't living fully before. And my life started upon those words, my real life. My life has exponentially grown in a way I never would have imagined if I still stayed in that little box of 
four person square. I talk about my book about, I went from a square family of four to a triangle of three, my boys and, and myself. And the triangle is the strongest shape in architecture because bridges are made of triangles uh, for support. And so I kept using that analogy and that image in my head and I just kept saying, I really want certain things in my life and everything you want is on the other side of fear. I also leaned into my faith and trust of the unknown and know that with light, you have to accept the dark. And so I just leaned into that, knowing that I'd be cared for. Thanks for sharing that. That's such a tough one, right? Of the unknowns and the fear that comes up from that, that actually will, will keep people crippled and stuck for not only just like one or two days or a few weeks, but I'm talking like decades. Uh -huh. like totally stuck. I loved how you talked about the suppression and how that actually exudes into our body. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? A lot of people don't have that connection that the emotional can actually connect to the physical and make those. So tell us a little bit more about your experience with that and what you've learned by going into that connection. Even as a child, I've always had issues with my stomach and my area and I have a lot of fear. I learned, I went through past life regressions and I knew I had a lot of fear in this lifetime and I want to understand why. That is an overall umbrella of who I, I am at this time is fear and I'm working through that and actually my second book is going to be about fear and the process of that. So for me, I know my triggers go to my stomach area in the in the sense of bloating or stomach upset. So I'm very cautious about what I eat because I know it can it affect me. And you know, our body holds on to these, these emotions, like I mentioned before, and that's like the work that I do. They can be cleared with these bowls because it helps to loosen, loosen up the emotion and let it go. And I have so much gratitude for learning about this because, you know, I don't want a disease to develop in my body and lead to other um, issues, concerns, you know, down the road. And so being mindful of our situation and how we're feeling is key to, you know, being a stepstone to things gravitating to like a worse decision kind of thing. There's a really good quote that I share in my practice with disease and disease is because there is disharmony in our body or an imbalance in our body. So having that balance, being aware of the mind, the body, you know, your spirit needs this is a struggle for everyone. I'm always you know, still working on this. I'm 43, and that's why I found you, Danita. I needed to have more balance with my body and what's going on. Acknowledging that it takes time, it's not going to go away overnight. So, I think the biggest share would be to spend time alone with yourself and being in stillness because that's when the answers happen. Everyone's different, you have to trust your body and what's happening. You mentioned bowls. I don't know. I'm, I'm going to assume some people on here don't know what bowls are. And so these sounding bowls, but can you tell us a little bit more about sound bowls and how they work for those that have never even heard of what that term even means? Of course. So here's a small singing bowl. I got into sound healing post uh, separation and I learned that sound healing could help my son. There's all kinds of sound healing. I gravitated toward Tibetan bowls. This is a small one. You can hear it. So sound bowls, these are ancient Tibetan sound bowls. They're made of seven metals. And the metals help, and they connect to our chakra system. There's seven chakras in our body, energy centers. We hold onto energy in certain areas if we're imbalanced. And the bowls, when they're placed on the body or around the body, I do treatments for people, moves energy that we're holding onto. And when it moves the energy, it helps to balance our chakras so things can flow easily through us and we feel lighter, we feel more rested. And it's, it's a form of meditation because we're still and we allow ourselves to be present. And these are the power of sound vibrations. So sound vibrations is, is a frequency to help for things in our bodies and helps to go cellular level. So they go deep down inside and people tell me they, they feel tingles in their body when when the bowls are on them, because that is an opportunity for inside ourselves to be resetting to back to where it was homeostasis before whatever happened in someone's body to cause 
a disconnect, a disharmony. My teacher who, who taught me the bowls, she shared that she was she discovered her breast cancer in herself from the bowls because bowls sounded different. So they're magic instruments that really, I call them magic instruments because they have a way to help relieve the pain and any kind of discomfort that people are experiencing. Thank you for sharing that. You hear all the time, don't kill my vibe. <laughs> <laughs> right there's a vibration to us all and if you guys don't know there is a really cool frequency that we can be at and what I've been learning a lot about is that there is a difference between a fear frequency and everything else is a subset so like anger or sadness or jealousy or grief or etc and then the other one the opposite is love and everything is a subset underneath love which peace and connection and wholeness and centeredness and calm whatever and these two vibrations are seriously so opposite and they're opposite of our DNA strands and how it connects to our codons. And it's so fascinating to learn about vibrations. And so I appreciate you sharing that and how sound bowls can be a part of that healing by creating that space and almost on a cellular level, kind of almost shake some of the cells and back to a level of balance and frequency, which is super cool. I know this is a little bit of a deep question, but it has been coming up. And so that's why I want to ask you this. Some women, when I'm talking to them, are absolutely kind of terrified of knowing who they really are. And so it's really like your book here, right, is just mm -hmm. like coming back to you. And yeah. what is it, do you think that one, they're terrified to actually connect with themselves? And two, how would you how would you be able to articulate what that is like on the other side when they do? Sure. I think people have a hard time with change. I think people have a hard time with the fear of what would it look like? How will my life change if I do this work? And the unknown. And also when you connect with yourself, if you do meditation, if you, you know, you read the passage in the book and you think deeply, it could bring up emotions that have been stored for many, many years. I right now I'm going through some things with inner child work. I talk about in the book, but I'm still working through it. My father is ill, you know, dying. He's got dementia and not doing well. And there are a lot of suppressed emotions from as a child with working with him that are coming up to the surface now because they have to. It's affecting my future relationships. It's affecting how I live my life. So it's scary at times to go down that deep hole and into the different layers but once you go through layers they don't affect us anymore something that i'm personally working through with my dad was not worthy enough I'm not good enough for this or for that and that holds me back from some new ventures i want to get into in my my healing practice just because i hear i'm not good enough and i'm great just as i am no one said I'm not good enough. So it's that voice from 20 years ago, 25 years ago, that I have to squash because in my heart, I know I have what it takes. I've proven myself. So it's allowing ourselves to stand alone with ourselves, to not have to always rely on someone else's view of you or plotting for you. You have to learn to applaud for yourself and know that you have what it takes. So that's that's basically my journey with that question. And the other side of the courage it takes to do something else or go through the healing work is just, like my book is called I Am Light, but it's true. You will feel lighter. You mentioned before the love, the higher vibration, fear is a low vibration. Fear is still there. Sadness, grief, all those things are still always there. We have to accept them. But we don't have to hang out with them. We can just recognize, okay, I am scared of this today. Recognize it, say I love you, and let it go. And then once you recognize where it came from, the source of it all, the trigger of it all, then you go back up again, and you'll feel high and light again. So every day is not this beautiful, full of light. We have to have the light because of experiencing the dark. But for me, doing the healing work, I come out of the dark moments much quicker than I had years ago. And that's what I feel is a massive benefit from going deep into your own healing work. Profound. 
It's very profound. I relate a lot to that and even got a little emotional there for a little bit is how much that connected with me. And what mm-hmm. came for me is that takes strength, Lisa, to have your past and you have two choices. You can go down a path that's not very strengthening for you or your sons, or you mm-hmm. have a path of being a leader and showing like having to live, eat, breathe, sleep this new direction so that you can actually be that example for others to see that this path is safe. Mm -hmm. And the fact that you've been able to make that choice, and even though it feels harder at first going through that change that you mentioned, it's very beautiful that you're doing it so that those that are following and witnessing and, and reading, that they go, it's safe. And that's, I think, really important as a leader to kind of pave your own way first. And I feel that and see that. And I really just appreciate and I want to honor you for a moment and just say thank you for making that route so that not only your sons can see this direction, your readers can see this direction and start to know that, wow, there is a whole better life when you start to create that connection within yourself. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. It definitely solar plexus that's the third chakra got a lot of work that's the fire i have a lot of fire in my personality and that is where the courage comes from to allow us to do these difficult make difficult decisions and to feel that you will be safe and yes i guarantee when you follow your heart and what your spirit is saying and what the little voice says inside like that's where you go and once you follow that then you'll be able to flow And the people you're meant to meet, you and I are meant to meet clearly, happen because I followed that little, that little voice. That's our truth. That cool. Yeah. That that even answers like, well, what do you do after those big decisions is the flow that it actually will just show you. And that letting go is that when you're aligned within yourself, that really you can actually feel safe to know that the path in front of you is, is getting built already. You don't have to control that path in front of you that I think yeah. is scary for a lot of people because that control feels sometimes comfort for them. But yeah. like, the real control is being able to be in that alignment with yourself, which is exactly what your book is about. So thank you for sharing. I know that we have some listeners right now. Maybe whatever they're going through, whatever you're going through, speak from your heart. What comes up for you? Thank you for the question. I feel that... All we have is what's in our heart. I never followed my heart as a young person. I followed my mind. I followed logic. And I'm very happy where it took me. I'm very grateful that I have my husband and my children with that same viewpoint. All the work came following what voice in here said. And that's all I really can share. So thank you, Lisa, for your time today. I really appreciate it. I'm going to make it easy for everybody to actually grab this book. All you have to do is just go down in the description below. There's a link that I left you guys that you could be able to follow Lisa, read her book and connect with her. What an amazing energy and spirit that she is, right? So I do believe that we're connecting for all reasons. So if you're here today and you're connecting with us, make sure to connect out with Lisa as well. So Lisa, thanks for your time today. Thank you. So I have really never stuck with anything for more than six months until I found Booty Bands Barbells. It's life-changing. The progress over perfection mindset has been so life-changing. I have self-love and to have self-worth. I just do the 10 minutes and I'm already reaping the benefits. The workouts are fun and that they're effective. I have seen great results that I never thought I'd ever see. I love it because I'm keeping the weight off. We help hold each other accountable as they commit to our goals. Booty Bands and Barbells has really changed my life for the better. I have to be real with you. The past Last six months really took a toll on me and my body. I felt incredibly stressed, isolated. After being a good 12 to 13 pounds heavier, I said that's it, I'm gonna make healthy choices. And I'm happy to tell you today that I am actually down 15 pounds. I feel amazing. I feel like I lost fat and put on muscle. I have a lot more energy. So it's never too late to start. You can take control again. Thanks, Booty Band Nation. Positive that you will get more sculpted, more toned, and you're gonna love those new healthy changes and our community and our coaches. From where you're at, no matter where you are, or how long you've been in the position. So just click the button below to book the call with our team.